do I feel whether I am accepted by society or not? Yes and no. Um, and I've explored this from many, many different angles. I've lived more of my life in England than where I was born. It has been a journey for me to be where I am today. Today I am happy to stand here and say I am an Englishman, I am English, I am British, and I am European, and I am Muslim. My parents are Indian, I was born in Africa, uh, and it has been, like I said, a, a journey. As I said, Islam requires me to be integrated into society, to regard you as my people, and hopefully you will see me as part of your people. But integration is a two-way street. It works both ways. And I think we, we have come a long way uh, as, a, as British people, we have come a long way in, in this quest to integrate the different diverse components that make a Great Britain today, the modern Britain. Um, we've had a lot more challenges as Muslims for us because of the terrorism that we have suffered for the past decade or more. There have been times where I feel that I am not welcome. I am alien. I, I'm made to feel that I am uh, almost a threat and an enemy of society. I once went to um, a conference in, in Italy. We boarded a flight from East Midlands the whole aircraft were EU citizens. Many Italians returning home, many Brits going there for work or for the conference like I was going. Early morning flight, we landed at uh, Florence Airport and I realized that there was just one single queue for the EU citizens, EU nationals. And all of us had queued up and I saw people in front in the queue they had their, actually I have my passport with me um, because I'm traveling um, uh, after I leave you here. So they had their uh, photo page of the passport open like this. So they had the, the passport page, photo page open like this and every one of them was just showing it to the officer at the window and they were walking past out to the taxis and the buses. So I was in that queue, and I'm thinking now, I'm European, I am a UK national, I have a British passport, I'm British and I'm English. So I'll be doing the same. <coughs> so I had my passport like this. I came to the window, started to walk away. Do you want to guess what happened next? No points for guessing. You're right, I was stopped. I was called back. My passport was taken from me, it was scanned and checked and all that. All the other people, and forgive me for saying this, all the other white people were allowed to go past. Now how does that make me feel? I could stand on top of the highest tower here and scream and shout and say, I am English, I am English, and I'm English, I love England. Even the England football team and the cricket team, and we're doing very badly today against the Pakistanis. <laughs> Okay, But until and unless society does not see me as such, what can I do? And I asked the conference, because I was quite cheesed off, I should have been more patient, but I asked the people there, because the whole conference was about integration and all that, and I had my, my um, talk to deliver. And I asked them, I said, when you see me, who do you see? Do you see an Asian man? Do you see a Muslim man? Do you ever see an Englishman in me? If I'm walking on the streets of your beautiful uh, uh, town, who do you see? Do you, do you really see an Englishman? So these are questions which uh, 
we need to probe and think about. Uh, when we cheer the England football team, it, it's, it gives me so much joy to see English fans, a vast majority of them who are white, cheering on the black players with as much passion <coughs> as they would cheer the white English team players. So your, uh, the, the, the black English players are really embraced as Englishmen on the football pitch. If only we would do the same when they leave the football pitch or when we leave our stadiums and our football grounds. So I, I love England. It is my home. This is where I've settled. I raised my family. England gives me, Britain gives me all the freedoms that I ever would hope for and wish for. I, I can dress like this. Nobody stops me or asks me why. I can have a mosque. I can have my own school. I can, have, I can do whatever I want, provided it's within the law. But it has to be, there has to be acceptance on the part of the wider majority and there has to be a willingness on the part of the minority uh, and, and accepting that we want to be part of the whole and we're all very different and uh, Britain has changed we don't expect everybody to be the same but uh, all my children were born in Leicester just five minutes from where I live uh, my wife was born in in London in Ilford they are off the soil. They, they don't know of any other place. I'm an immigrant. Uh, there was a time in Africa where I was put together with the whites. So we were the, we were the white as compared to the blacks. Suddenly when I came to England, I was black. Because in those days, the black and Asians were put together as compared to the whites. And over the years, I began to accept that, look, I, this is my home now. I am British. And for a long time, I struggled to accept that I was English because in my mind, I thought English was fair skin, light hair, light eyes, but not anymore. The definition of English and being English has changed dramatically. Anybody born in this country is English. But whether we will embrace them as English, despite their color, their religion, and so forth, as we would anybody else. That is the challenge for, I would guess, for, for many of you. But from, from my part, I can say, I would lay down my life for England. I would defend England to the death, because this is my home. This is my country. And my religion says that I have to defend my country. I have to care for my people because that's where I have made my home. And I could go on, but let's give others a chance to ask.